Let's talk business. This is how we're moving yours forward. Standard Bank, moving forward. From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research's Built Environment Unit has concluded a two-year performance research study, providing breakthrough information on passive energy efficiency, which could be helpful to government when implementing future building standards for low-cost housing. Samantha Mulman has the story. After signing an initial memorandum of understanding with chemicals giant BASF in 2010, the CSIR's Built Environment Unit took to studying the energy and thermal performance of a low-cost model house erected on location at the CSIR's innovation site in Pretoria. The aim of the study was to measure the absolute temperature performance of a standard low-cost building using alternative insulation technology based on BASF's Neopore polystyrene. This features expandable graphite particles designed to improve the insulation in newly built and renovated properties. CSIR Built Environment Senior Researcher Llewellyn van Veek tells us more about the BASF demonstration house and the results of the study. The big question was what do we need in South Africa? If we're going to be specifying or regulating for insulation, what should that be? So a lot of this was to try and determine, uh, try and get the answer. So that's a 150 millimeter wall, 100 millimeter slab, insulation, and 40 millimeter in the roof. What we know is the wall's fantastic. It's better than what SANS 204 um, uh, is offering. So immediately SANS 204 could in fact be increased because we know it's cheap. you can do this tomorrow. It's an off the shelf. There's no work needs to be done. There's no R&D needs to be done. So we know that value can in fact be higher. Um, we know that the, the insulation value in the roof on here can be improved. Uh, and we'll do that this year and try and get a figure on that. And we know that the insulation under the slab under South African conditions is not, it doesn't offer you value for money. Uh, in, for two reasons. Primarily because our soil temperatures don't get as cold as you would find, for example, in Canada where it freezes. So you're not, you're not landing up with a, with a, with a, a cold soil temperature. Um, we predominantly hot, the climate the studies indicate we're going to get hotter. So we need to deal more for heat than we need to deal for cold. Ultimately, this groundbreaking study concludes that the BASF demonstration house would require minimal heating in winter to maintain a comfortable indoor environment. The study further indicates that the house would cost owners about 550 rand a year in heating expenses, compared with a SANS 204 compliance house, which would cost owners about 2,500 rand a year. Despite its many benefits, however, the BASF demonstration house costs 90,000 rand to construct, significantly more than the current low-income housing subsidy amount of 68,000 rand. Still, the study has been acknowledged by the CSIR and BASF as a breakthrough experiment and a significant resource of information for government as it embraces alternative building technologies. Meanwhile, the CSIR Built Environment Unit has since renewed its Memorandum of Understanding with BASF to continue researching passive energy efficiency in new buildings. The chemical company's European Construction Competence Centre head, Dr. Dirk Finhoff, explains BASF's role in promoting sustainable low-cost housing in South Africa. BASF is as an enabler providing materials for so to speak, better ways of construction. There are many ways to construct cost-effective houses. In this particular technology, based upon the Neopore panel, we introduced this material, which also leads to a very fast and cost-effective way of constructing. And, as was discussed today, demonstrates um, benefits during the life cycle, as you can save heating costs. Other news making headlines this week, ESCOM says retailers should liaise directly with NERSA on municipal tariffs and global anti-corruption bodies increasingly share information on firms operating in multiple jurisdictions. 
It is becoming increasingly important for the retail and property sectors to liaise with the National Energy Regulator of South Africa about electricity tariffs set by municipalities, rather than focus on state-owned power utility ESCOM's proposed tariff increases, says ESCOM's former spokesperson Hilary Joffe. There has been a big issue which has emerged about the difference between municipal and ESCOM tariffs, and that is something which the retailers, which we hear today, seem very concerned about. Um, and made some really important points. One of which is that it seems quite important that the retail sector and the property to should engage with the regulator much more on the municipality's tariff increases, not just ESCOM's applications for tariff increases. And I think that in the course of this tariff application process, um, one of the constructive things to emerge has been that a lot of questions which are issues for the country, such as where do we go with municipal tariffs and how should municipalities be funded? It's not an ESCOM issue, it's a country issue. Anti-corruption agencies in the US, the UK, the European Union and South Africa increasingly share information to scrutinize the business ethics and anti-corruption practices of companies operating in multiple jurisdictions. In today's regulatory environment, we've seen an unprecedented increase in cooperation between regulators globally. And as a result of that increased global cooperation, whenever any entity decides or elects to make a self-disclosure, you must focus in factor into your calculus whether or not that self-disclosure in one jurisdiction will lead to exposure in other jurisdictions. So no longer is a disclosure just a local matter, it's become a globalized matter. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.